Endpoint of fatigue is an important one for us um, because it's the number one symptom that patients have um, who have MS. And so trying to understand what the effect on that symptom becomes an important aspect. This was a post hoc then study looking at um, uh, a fatigue uh, impact scale, um, patient reported outcome um, scale for patients. Um, and it basically showed that, uh, that ublituximab did have uh, a significant impact on fatigue by improving fatigue throughout the study. Um, the, the scale um, that was used if you had um, a decrease in nine points, and there was a decrease of 9.1 points on that scale on the ublituximab arm, um, it was uh, significant, found to be significant for patients, that it was a meaningful, clinically meaningful um, endpoint for the patients. And so it was very exciting to kind of see that it did hit that threshold. And when it compared to uh, teriflunamide patient, or patients on teriflunamide, um, they found that patients on ublituximab that have better improvements in their fatigue scales than patients on teriflunamide. And so there were, uh, it, the study looked at it in a couple different ways, but the end result really is that uh, fatigue got better uh, throughout the study. I think the interesting part about it, aside of fatigue, is that it, fatigue, you know, sometimes with patient reported outcomes, it's hard to actually see an impact on scales because there's a lot of noise that can kind of come in with these, um, uh, with this methodology, right? When you're asking patients like, hey, how are you doing and things like this, if you catch them on a bad day versus a good day, uh, a day where they had a bad night of sleep, it might give you a lot of noise. And so being able to see an impact, you know, on, on consistently because of the, the way they looked at it. So they, they looked at it a couple different ways. They looked at it um, just kind of overall effect. They looked at it using a least squared mean. So kind of being able to collapse the different time points uh, and saying overall in the study there was an impact and you can adjust for different things. And so with, even after adjusting everything, you could see an impact. Um, consistently, the different subscores of this uh, fatigue scale um, showed benefits uh, throughout the study. Um, and so it kind of tells us that it, it wasn't just, I think, an anomaly, um, that it was a true finding uh, for the study. You know, true effect, I guess, by uh, on, on the on fatigue for patients. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure what the next steps will be, I mean, I think trying to explore, you know, some of the other uh, patient reported outcomes and trying to understand, you know, maybe which patients might um, have the bigger benefits um, and things like these are things that could be explored with some of this data. Um, I, I think it tells us that overall that this drug is helpful and impactful for patients. Um, and so looking at other outcomes. Um, you know is important. So there's been recent evaluations of looking at, you know, I mean we know the primary and the secondary endpoints, it reduced relapses, it reduced number of uh, T2 lesions and contrast enhancing lesions and these kinds of things. Um, but you know trying to understand like what the effect is on NIDA for example, uh, what's the effect on the EDSS and disability progression throughout the study. Um, and so that's been looked at, but now being able to maybe correlate, you know, the fatigue on some of these other findings and being able to tie in fatigue with, hey, these were the patients that were more severe, or they the ones that had more fatigue. And so it just teaches us a little bit more about MS, in a way, um, and, and trying to understand, you know, this very complicated disease. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think ublituximab is a very new medicine still, um, and so trying to understand, you know, kind of getting a sense of how this medicine is, um, uh, you know, works uh, in relationship to other drugs that maybe have a similar mechanism of action that are also in that high efficacy group um, and things like this, and I think this consistently shows a little bit that you know, this drug looks to have similar effects as the drugs that maybe we've been using for a longer time. Um, and I think that's important to kind of provide us reassurance of like, hey, this drug is, I think, doing what we think it should be doing um, and working on patients. So I think it's, 
Um, it's good to have these kinds of data and kind of saying, you know, the extent of how fast it might help. You know, we were seeing it, um, some of the effects already very early into the study uh, by the first time point where it was looked at at 24 weeks. Um, and so just understanding the disease and the drug better is helpful.